Today for Mousetrap Monday, we're going to take a look at this antique mousetrap that was one of the first to be sold under the concept of killing mice with electricity. Nowadays, there are many different electric mousetraps available on the market, but for its time, this was really innovative. Original newspaper articles advertise this as being a new electric mousetrap that gets rid of mice quickly and cleanly. I've seen other advertisements that compare this to a form of mouse execution via mouse electric chair. The patent for this mousetrap was first filed during World War II on May 15, 1945, and it received its final patent on May 20, 1947. It's made out of a black plastic called Bakelite. During World War II era, all kinds of materials were made out of Bakelite. They made several mousetraps. Here's a four-way choker made out of the same black plastic. And the other part of the mousetrap is bare wires. There's two on either side and two copper pads down here. You just plug it in the wall, put bait in there, the mouse comes along, touches the bare wires, and in theory receives a lethal shock. Now other than the safety concerns for this trap, I do question how effective it is. A while back I posted a video on a hillbilly homemade electric mouse trap that's basically the same idea. You plug in a cord that has bare wires. Now when I tested that out, mice and rats came along, touched the bare wires, received the shock, and it didn't affect them at all. I thought they'd turn into a flaming ball of electricity and fur, but instead they jumped away and then came right back to get more bait. They didn't even seem phased. I'm curious if this antique design works better. Let's put some bait in here, go plug it in, set it up in the barn with motion cameras, and see if we can kill a mouse with this antique electrocutor mousetrap. It's clear from the motion camera footage that bare wires plugged in the wall does not deliver the right kind of shock to kill mice. The mouse kept coming back and getting the bait. It was shocked, but it didn't seem to mind that much. Now I want to test this trap out with a different power source, one that's specifically engineered to kill mice with electricity, and see if we can make it work. To do that, I'm going to hook it up to this trap. This is the Victor Smart Kill electric mouse trap. It's one of the most advanced mouse traps available in the market. I featured it in last week's video. It'll send notifications to your smartphone when you catch a mouse. If you lift up this side, you can see the two metal pads where the mice touch it and get electrocuted. What we're going to do is remove this side, and then use the power source from this trap to see if we can kill mice. Even though we've changed it, this still should send notifications to my wife's smartphone when we get a mouse. I'm going to start by taking this trap apart. To do that, I'm going to remove four screws. There, now the screws are loose. As you can see, this works on four AA batteries, so this is six volts total. We'll pop this off. Here's the components. Now the key to this trap is how it's engineered. They've come a long way since the early design. This has a circuit board, on-off switches, safety switches, timers, and I believe this part is called a capacitor. Even though this only has six volts, the wires run through this, and it helps load up a shock. Then it turns off, so it's extra safe. Now down here we have the two wires, one right here and one right here. Now I made a plug here with bare wires. We can attach our trap, then hook up these wires to the Victor Smart Kill. This should work. We'll add batteries, defeat the safety switch, set this up in the barn with motion cameras, turn the trap on, and see if this new power source will kill mice. A few things I've learned from testing out this trap is to kill mice with electricity, you have to have the right kind of electrical current. Just plugging in wires to a 110 outlet does not work. The mice will get zapped, but they come right back. So I found hooking it up to this alternate power source with the capacitor and direct current was much better. And a lot safer, this thing has a timer because there's a chance of electrical shock and fire. Another thing I learned is an electrical mouse trap needs to have the right design and how it delivers the shock. In the original one, the metal pads are side by side. That way, when the mouse goes in, it touches both pads at the same time, and it has a chance to jump away. In the new designs, they're front to back. That way, the whole body of the mouse is over the first pad. When it touches the second pad, it has good contact. And a final thing I learned is when the mouse first receives the shock, it tends to jump away. 
so the trap has to contain it. This trap did not work until I added this, a plastic cover on top, that way it's contained, it's squeezed in here. With this trap it's a tunnel, so when it receives a shock, it continues to get shocked, it can't jump away. This original electrocutor mouse trap required quite a bit of modification to make it work, both by adding a cover and changing the power source. Now I couldn't show the full sequence of this trap in action. In the past, YouTube has issued strikes on my channel for showing traps in action, so if you want to see that footage, I'll put a link in the description below to my website, and there you can see it. Electrical mouse traps have come a long way. I didn't receive a strong enough Wi-Fi signal to get a notification, but this Victor Smart Kill electric mouse traps one of the most advanced mouse traps available on the market, and they've come a long way. I'm posting between four and five rodent trap videos a week, including testing out antique and vintage mouse traps and new modern mouse traps. So if you want to see how to catch mice, rats, squirrels, chipmunks, moles, voles, and gophers, stay tuned.